Hi, my name is Jane Bennett and I'm a Senior Veterinary Officer with New South Wales DPI. I'd like to take this opportunity to pass on some information regarding African horse sickness, one of the higher risk emergency animal diseases for Australia. Why the local excitement? Well, it's an exotic viral disease that's never been reported in Australia that has up to 95% mortality in horses. It is closely related to the blue tongue virus and it spread to the Asia Pacific region for the first time in 2020. African horse sickness is an arbovirus spread by Culicoides midges that's endemic in Central and Southern Africa with zebra being the main reservoir host. Occasional outbreaks have also occurred in Northern Africa, Europe and the Middle East. An outbreak in Thailand in March 2020 appears to have been from a zebra importation. And in September 2020, vaccinated horses illegally imported from Thailand to Malaysia caused the horse industry in that country to be shut down to international movements. All equines are susceptible to African horse sickness with horses having the highest mortality rate of up to 95% in any particular outbreak donkeys and zebras showing mild or subclinical disease. And we have to remember that dogs are susceptible possibly through eating carcasses. However, it's not a zoonosis and doesn't affect humans. The presentations can be one of three types, either subclinical with high temperatures, a general malaise for one or two days, but rarely death. That's the form we see in donkeys and zebras routinely. A subacute or cardiac form with high temperatures, swelling of the face and particularly the brisket with a 50% fatality rate and the acute respiratory form with high temperatures, respiratory difficulty and it's nearly always fatal. As far as clinical signs go, they go along with those three forms. There's fever and sweating, temperatures usually 40 to 41 and a half degrees, spasmodic coughing, they get off colour and don't eat. You get swelling around the head and eyes, particularly the periorbital fossa. You get redding, reddening of the mucous membranes, particularly the conjunctiva. Um, sometimes they show signs of colic, difficulty breathing, and in the end stages, there's a frothy nasal discharge. You can see from these pictures here, the periorbital swelling that I'm talking about, the swelling of the conjunctiva, and general swelling around the head region, as well in these slides of the nasal discharge that we talk about towards the end stage, usually a couple of hours away from death. In this acute respiratory form, death usually occurs in about one to two days. As far as differential diagnosis goes, probably the most likely one in Australia is looking at Hendra virus infection, particularly with the respiratory cases. In addition, there's equine encephalosis, equine viral arteritis, equine infectious anemia, purpura hemorrhagica with the swelling, equine pyroplasmosis, anthrax, and a variety of different toxins. As far as diagnosis goes, you need to make sure you collect bloods, both EDTA and plain tubes, so that we can do serology and PCR testing, and lymph nodes, especially the mesenteric and bronchial lymph nodes, lungs, and spleen from dead horses. However, in Australia in particular, bear in mind the risk of doing postmortems when you've got Hendra as a differential diagnosis. So we're more likely to look just at blood samples. So what is the potential for spread to Australia? We know that the Culicoides midges can get blown up to 700 kilometres over water. So it is possible for windborne spread from Asia to Northern Australia. However, it is unknown at this present moment in time whether the Australian midges can carry or spread the disease, although they do spread blue tongue virus and as a closely related virus, it's certainly a possibility. We do have a large feral horse and donkey population across Northern Australia that would make eradication difficult in those circumstances. So if it became endemic, particularly in the donkey population, we'd have to look at different forms of management. How prepared are we for an outbreak? Well, at the moment we have strict importation guidelines around equines and their genetic material. 
and commodities that might carry insect vectors such as cut flowers get sprayed and carefully checked prior to entry to the country so unlikely to enter in those circumstances. We also take part in a National Arbovirus Monitoring Program or NAMP program that monitors the distribution of the Culicoides midges and how far south they come in any one particular season and as well as the spread of the blue tongue virus and it could be possible to put monitoring in for African horse sickness along those lines. And finally, the African horse sickness OSVET plan is being updated to guide a response in the face of an outbreak. The control measures in a face of an outbreak would include such things as housing horses under midge proof netting, using insect repellents on horses, insecticides and other measures to reduce insect populations in the environment, and preventing vectors feeding on infected horses. You can see in this example from the Thailand outbreak, the screening on the outside of this stable in order to stop the spread of vectors contacting the horse. The other important part of a control program is likely to involve vaccination. However, the vaccination that's used in South Africa is a live attenuated vaccine uh, and unlikely to be available for use in Australia because of its ability to resort to, or to revert to virulence. There's work being done on recombinant vaccines uh, and that may be an option, but of course cost limit, limits that research. We're more likely to have to look at control zones, a little bit like they do in South Africa. And the maps here, you can see what I mean by a control zone. We have the infected area to the northeastern region of the country. We have a protection zone, a surveillance zone, and a free zone where, we use, where they use both vaccination and monitoring surveillance in order to detect any outbreaks and prevent any infection within that free zone area. And finally, for further information, you can find a fact sheet on the New South Wales DPI website, as well as the Emergency Animal Disease Field Guide for Australian Veterinarians through Animal Health Australia. Make sure you consider African horse sickness as a differential diagnosis, particularly with severe respiratory conditions. And if you do consider it's a risk, then make sure you contact either the New South Wales DPI, Local Land Services District Veterinarian, or the EAD hotline on 1800 675 888.